Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new video in this small series of advanced tactical play. And when I talk about advanced tactical play, I mean tactics which are not that easy. So tactics which are not like capture, capture, check and some forced wins, but with some more hidden ideas. But I also want to give you some hints how you can spot even such tactics more easily and how you can find those hidden motives. And one of the key principles which I myself use a lot is always to ask where is the opponent's weakness because tactics are always based on weaknesses and once we really understand where the weaknesses are, the tactics aren't so hard to spot. So let's have a look at the first example as an exercise and try to think about where are white's weaknesses here and then try to find the tactical idea how can black win the game here. You have three minutes again and after that we will discuss the solution. So welcome back and we will right dive into the solution of this example and in the first step we will examine where exactly the weaknesses are. In the game White has just played this king to e2 and I think this king might be a weakness because it gives us some checks and some forcing moves. So we keep this king in mind. Also talking about weaknesses I always consider everything a weakness which is defended zero times and when I say zero times I also count um, things which are defended as often as they are attacked because this usually cancels each other out. So I consider this pawn to be weak because it's attacked twice and it's just defended twice which is the same as zero. Again this pawn is also weakness zero times defended 
H2 is also weakness, but we need to adjust a bit because we cannot really get there. It's not really a weakness. E4 is also weakness. Maybe we have some moves attacking it, so I would consider it as a weakness. But putting those things together, um, there is a very strong maneuver, uh, which starts with knight f4. A forcing move and a check, and this king really needs to go there. But after this, we have this move, which is a bit hidden, and I know you cannot really get to it straight by examining weaknesses, but once you understand that the b2 pawn becomes undefendable once the rooks are traded because of some little tactics like takes, takes, and a3 and the a pawn wheel queen, then you basically got it because white is in trouble. White cannot defend the rook because it would drop the g2 pawn. And on the other hand, white can also not take because no matter what white will be playing, black's next move will be take, take a3, and of course you need to consider all the routes by the knight but the knight cannot stop the pawn after a2. So finally this weakness makes the difference and once you spot it that um, once a knight needs to take here and you play a3 it's winning then you understood what is the winning motive. Maybe you tried to get through here from the initial position but realized White is not forced to take with the rook, but if he would take with the rook, we would be winning already. So that's how you might um, get to the motive, see the motive for the first time, but see, it's not yet working because he can take with the knight immediately when the rook, of course, stops the pawn. So once we get some motive like this into our head, then we try to make it work another way. And this is by like confusing the opponent forcing him to defend some other weaknesses and then the king is tied to the g2 pawn and um, cannot defend the rook while the rook trade proves to be uh, crucial because he can no longer um, stop the pawn with a rook. So that's by far the most forcing and yeah, also the only win. Um, so if you have some other suggestions, they might be not bad, but they're missing the win. So we won't go into details here. So that's already it for this example. If you liked it and got something from it, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really means a lot and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.